If you're gonna move out of your collapsing Western country, you should probably move to a country where you're not gonna get murdered or raped or robbed or mugged or any of that junk. So one of the factors you need to pay attention to is how safe is the country to where you are moving to. And if you're like most people, you are probably under the mistaken impression that your collapsing Western country is safer than other countries, which isn't true. So in this video, I'm gonna show you the actual numbers, not my opinions, the actual real numbers on the top 10 safest countries you can move to. And at the end of this video, I'm going to give you the real numbers on how unsafe in terms of crime rates your Western country is. United States, Canada, Europe, New Zealand, Australia. You're going to be very surprised, and Westerners are always surprised, when they realize how unsafe their own countries are. They spend all this time worrying about other countries when they don't realize that they're in some of the most dangerous countries in the world. You need to know how safe or unsafe your current country is and the country you wanna to move to is. And also in this video, I'm gonna to talk to you not only about the safety factor, but whether or not that's a good country to move to or live in. Because just because a country is safe doesn't necessarily mean you wanna live there. I'm gonna cover both those things all in this video right now. I am Caleb Jones, this is Alpha Male 2.0. I make a six-figure location independent international income while dating multiple good-looking women, and I teach men like you how to do the same thing. Now, first thing off the bat, we're talking about safety and crime rates. The problem with most crime indices or indexes, how do you say that word? However you say that word, indexes on the internet, is that the countries they show that are the safest countries, they use other factors other than crime rates. So all the time I'll talk to people on the internet and they'll say something like, the safest country in the world is something like Iceland. And you go, what, Iceland? And you say, yeah, look at this index. It says right there, it's number one. And you go look at that index and you look at how they factor and how they rank these countries. They include all kinds of junk in there that have nothing to do or little to do with actual crime rates. Things like military spending. What does that have to do with your odds of being mugged in the street? Uh, nothing. Other things like the welfare state, how well they take care of their people in terms of welfare spending and crap like that. So in this video, I'm gonna use strictly per capita crime rates in these countries, and that's it, no other factors. Be very careful when you do your own research on the internet in terms of peace indexes or safety indexes. Look and see how they factor the numbers. Very important. The data I'm using in this video is from World Population Review. There'll be a link in the description. And this is based purely on per capita crime rates for each country and no other factors. Even on that website, there is a safety index and they include a bunch of other garbage. So don't even look at it. It's useless information. All you want to know is your odds of encountering a crime, violent or otherwise, in a country where you live. That's it. No other factors. You're also going to see that in this top 10 list, only one of these countries, only one of the top 10 safest countries in the world are in the Western world. The other nine are outside of the West. There's another one or two where it's debatable. It's kind of a gray area whether or not you consider it in the Western world. I'll talk about that as we go along. But only one of these countries is solidly in the Western world. All the West are non-Western countries. What have I been saying for years? The Western world is in a slow state of collapse. And when you have a civilization that is collapsing, are crime rates going up, down, or staying the same? What do you think? They're going up. And like I said, at the end of this video, I'm gonna show you the exact numbers on how dangerous these Western countries are as compared to other countries. So I'm gonna go through this list in descending order, starting with number 10, ending with number one. And I'm also gonna give you their actual crime index numbers. This is a number ranked from one to 100, and the lower the number, the better. So if you have a high number, that means you have a lot of crime. If you have a low number, that means you are very safe and have very little crime. And these are the top 10, literally, top 10 safest countries in the world. We will start with number 10. And number 10, believe it or not, is, in theory, Rwanda. Rwanda, yes, Rwanda. That has a crime index of 22.4, which is good. Now, what the hell? Didn't they just have a giant genocide back in the 90s? Yes, they did, but that was a long time ago. A lot of countries can turn around. You can't hold that against them. But the reason Rwanda has been able to pull off this number is two things. One is, I don't think I believe the data. I just don't think I believe it. Uh, I don't know how that data was verified. Africa is iffy when it comes to data like this. Number two, Rwanda is a very, very teeny, teeny, tiny country. And so in a teeny, teeny, tiny country, it's easier to finagle the numbers because we're talking here about per capita rates. So 
Would you move to Rwanda? Would you move to anywhere in Africa? Rwanda is actually one of the better countries in Africa. And my opinion on living in Africa is the same as it's always been. And that is, if you are a young, really super ambitious guy and, you want to work, and you're not afraid of working hard and roughing it for a few years, Africa is a fantastic place to move. I have said that if I was in my 20s and single and had no kids, I would be going to Africa and I would be making a lot of money there, doing cell phone stuff, water reclamation, doing all kinds of things. So if you want to be in a very aggressive young man, Africa might be a good idea. If you are in any other category, don't move to Africa. Life is just too hard there. Too many variables, too many negative factors, too many unknowns, probably not a good idea. And I've talked about Africa in other videos and other blog posts and things like that I've made over the years. Africa is a really interesting place. The population is going to explode there. Very interesting place to watch over the next hundred years. Would you move there? Only if you're a very young, ambitious, very motivated guy and you're willing to work really, really hard. Other than that, I would probably pass on Rwanda. So that leads us to number nine on this list. And that is, probably to no one's surprise, Japan. Japan is the ninth safest country in the world with a crime index of 21.67, so 21. Pretty damn safe. Yes, Japan is obviously one of the safest countries in the world. It is deeply ingrained in their culture there. It's one of those wonderful places, like where I live in Dubai, where you can leave your wallet in a busy store or a mall and come back several hours later and it'll still be there. Pretty cool. So yes, Japan is very, very safe. Um, they don't have a lot of guns there. Uh, I've said before, if you live in Japan, you probably don't need to own a gun because there's very little gun crime and very few people own guns. Is Japan a good place to live? Well, that depends, a little complicated. As I have said many times, I've talked about this many times before, written about this. Japan, unfortunately, is the only country in Asia that is collapsing, just like the West. Asia is on the rise. Just about every country in Asia is gonna do well over the next 25, 30 years to varying degrees, except Japan. Japan is collapsing right before our eyes. In 50, 60, 70 years, there will be no Japan. It'll be this big, beautiful island with three or four farmers on it, and that's it. Kind of sad, kind of depressing. So Japan is on its way down. Does that mean it's a bad place to live? Well, it depends. If you really like Japanese people, if you really like Japanese culture, certainly the women in Japan are some of the most beautiful women in the world, and I mean that literally, if you don't mind small boobs, and I do. But if you don't mind that, Japanese women are beautiful as hell. Maybe it would be fine for you to live, especially if you're an alpha male 2.0 location independent income that comes 100% from outside of Japan. I probably wouldn't go to Japan and start a business in Japan, but if you had income coming from outside of Japan that was nice and strong and you could live there location dependent, Japan might be okay. Now, if you're a young guy, you may have to move several decades down the road when Japan is on its way out. You have to factor that in there because you're moving to a collapsing country. But it might be okay. Would I move to Japan? No, and I like Japan, I've been to Japan many times. It doesn't make sense for me to move away from one collapsing country to another collapsing country. That's just not how I think. So to me, probably not. You might be different though, but there are other places that I think are much better and much more exciting and have less negatives than Japan. But it is a very safe country to live in, no question about that. Number eight, eight safest country in the world is the only Western country on this list and that is Switzerland with a crime index of 21.58, 21.58, very safe country. Now, Switzerland is very interesting. Would I move to Europe? Are you kidding? No, I've said many times, Europe is not only collapsing, it's collapsing faster than the United States, and that's saying something. So, hell no, if you live in Europe, you need to get the fuck out of Europe right now. I've been saying that for many years, including pre-Cerveza sickness, so no. That being said, of all the Western European nations, Switzerland is the least insane. That's true. They're not part of the EU because they're smart. They're not part of the Eurozone because they're smart. They do a lot of things right in Switzerland. There's a lot of governmental structures in Switzerland that I actually kind of like. Uh, the culture is pretty good. There are a number of things I like about Switzerland, but again, would I move to Switzerland if I had 197 other options, which I do in the world, just because it's a safe country? No, I really wouldn't. So I really can't recommend Switzerland, even though there are some positives to it. There's no way in hell I am moving to a European country, particularly a Western European country, particularly a landlocked Western European country like Switzerland. I just can't do it. As I've said many times, go visit Europe. Go enjoy Europe and then get the fuck out of there. Europe is great to visit. You don't want to live there. Speaking of Europe, that brings us to number seven on this list and that is Slovenia, believe it or not. Slovenia has a crime index of 20.95, 20.95, 20 
Not bad, very safe country. Unlike Switzerland, Slovenia, unfortunately, is part of the EU and part of the Eurozone, part of the Schengen area. Therefore, I do not recommend you live there or move there, even though it is very safe. It would be a very relaxing place, I imagine. I don't know too much about Slovenia, but I do know it's basically a country that's this big in the middle of a forest and about two million people live there. And that's about it, not super exciting. I just can't recommend countries to move to that are part of the EU. Would I live in the EU? Would I move to an EU country just because it was safe? No. If I'm not moving to Switzerland, I'm sure as hell not moving to Slovenia, which is part of the EU. But again, do whatever you want. I'm just giving you my recommendations here. It is a safe country. That brings us to one of my favorite countries in the entire world, by far, number six, the sixth safest country in the world is Hong Kong with a safety index of 20.91. Hong Kong is amazing, Hong Kong is wonderful, it is not perfect, there's no such thing as a perfect country, you can find negatives to every country, but Hong Kong is fucking awesome. Hong Kong not only is a very safe country, it is the second or third freest country in the world according to most freedom indexes, and there's a reason for that, it has a long history of that kind of stuff. Hong Kong's great, it's one of my primary flags, I love Hong Kong to death. Now. Has Hong Kong had some problems? Yeah, Hong Kong has had some problems. Is Hong Kong gonna have more problems? Yes, it will. Hong Kong has peaked, it has crested, it's gonna stagnate for a while at a very high level, which is good, and slowly, very slowly, as China continues to put its neck on the people of Hong Kong, it's gonna slowly start to decline, but it's a very slow, gradual decline. It will take many, many decades, so if you wanted to move to Hong Kong, that would be perfectly great, perfectly fine with me, good place to live, especially if your focus is business and making money. Great place to move to if you wanna make money. By the way, in terms of having business and having location independent income, if you don't know where to get started with this, if you have no idea where to get started and you have very little money to spend, you can get my book, Big Income from Little Work. That shows you exactly how to start your own location independent business. And I think it's 20 bucks. It's one of the cheapest things I sell. BigIncomeFromLittleWork.com, head over there. Easy place, easy book. I wrote it for guys who are business beginners. Strongly recommend that book. It'll be the best $20 you ever spent. You'll make a hell of a lot more money on the information you get from the book. But Hong Kong is awesome. Are there some negatives? Yes, but those are mostly cultural negatives. If you don't like a big bustling city, if you wouldn't wanna live in an Asian country, then okay, there are other places. But Hong Kong is fantastic, highly recommend it, and it's one of the safest countries in the world, number six to be exact. Next, that brings us to number five, the fifth safest country in the world. It's a country in the Middle East, and you're about to find out that three of these countries, the top 10 most safest countries in the world, three of them are in the Middle East. See how little Americans know about this? Americans hear Middle East and they go, oh my God, violence and terror and death and no. Three of the top 10 safest countries in the world are right here where I live in the Middle East and number five is Oman with a safety index of 20.62. One of the safest countries in the world. Oman is literally about four hours from me driving distance. I could hop in a car and I'd be, I could be in Oman in about four hours. Matter of fact, a lot of people who live here in Dubai will do visa hopping. They'll hop in a car when their visa expires or get about to expire. They'll drive for four hours, they'll cross the border, they'll get a stamp, they'll come right back into the UAE. Cool, great, fine. Oman is one of the more calm, liberalized, westernized countries in the Middle East. Although I don't know much about their residency or citizenship policies, I imagine that would be a very difficult country to move to and become a resident in, so I don't think I can fully recommend that. Plus, there are two other countries in the Middle East that are much better than Oman to move to. I happen to live in one of them and they're both on this list. Next, fourth safest country in the world is the country of Georgia with a safety index of 20.5. Now, and I have to say this always to my fellow Americans or my fellow ex-Americans, I don't really consider myself an American anymore, but whatever. I'm talking about the country of Georgia in Central Asia. I am not talking about the state of Georgia, the country of Georgia. Georgia is also one of my favorite countries in the world. I strongly considered moving to Georgia. There were only one or two little things I didn't like about it, but it's a fantastic place to live. Absolutely, if you wanna to move to Georgia, move to Georgia. It's cheap, it's safe, 
It's one of the emerging markets of the world. Georgia's fantastic. I have very little negative to say about Georgia other than the one negative is that it borders Russia and I don't really want to live in a country that has a direct adjacent border to a country that is violent and or not an ally. And unfortunately, Georgia has a border with Russia who is controlled by a tyrant who likes to invade countries whenever he wants. That's the one downside of Georgia. Other than that, Georgia is as close to perfect as you can get. Georgia's fantastic, strongly recommend that. One of my flags is in Georgia. I do various things over there. I can't talk about them publicly, but I do various things in my financial life in Georgia. Great place, strongly recommend it. By the way, before we get to the final three safest countries in the world, if you want more content like this, here's what you need to do. You need to like this video, you need to leave a comment on this video, even if you disagree with me, that's fine. You need to subscribe to this channel and click the notification bell. That would help me out a lot, but it'll help you because you'll get more content like this. Okay, number three, third safest country in the world is a country I know a little about. It's the United Arab Emirates. It's my country, it's where I live. Safety index here is 15.45, a full five points drop from number four on this list. Dubai, where I live, is often ranked as one of the safest, if not the safest city in the world. There is virtually no crime here. There's crime in every city, there's crime in every country, but as compared to other places in the world, this is literally one of the safest places in the world you can live, and I've talked a lot about Dubai. I did an entire video about why I moved to Dubai. Matter of fact, you can click the link up there if you want the 10 reasons why I moved to Dubai. I love Dubai, I've been here several months now. I am a huge fan, I'm very excited about it. Love it to death. There's no taxes here, people are nice here, it's a great travel hub, and it's super duper safe. It is also one of the easiest countries to move to in terms of both visas and getting residency. I am a full-time legal resident of the United Arab Emirates. It wasn't that difficult at all. Matter of fact, it was much easier to become a resident here than a lot of the, quote, easier countries like in South America. United Arab Emirates is awesome. I love it to death. It's a little expensive in some aspects. In some aspects, it's actually cheaper. I mean, we'll do an upcoming video about that. Highly recommend it, unless you wanna live somewhere on the cheap. If you're a young guy, you don't wanna spend a lot of money, you'd rather live somewhere like in Colombia or Thailand or something like that, then fine. But if money is not a big deal to you or a big concern for you, can't recommend United Arab Emirates more. Obviously, I love it because I moved here and I looked at many countries to move to to make the decision to move here. So, and, the safety was one of the factors. I mentioned that in my prior video about it. I'm married, I wanna make sure that my wife is safe when she goes out by herself. And she is in Dubai, in one of the safest cities in the world and the third safest country on the entire planet. That brings us to the second safest country in the world. Number two is Taiwan. Not bad, not bad Taiwan, well done. With a safety index of 15.28, pretty damn good. I didn't know that Taiwan was actually safer than Japan. Pretty amazing. Taiwan's great. It's a fantastic country. I think it's a great country to visit. It's a great country to live in. The only reason I didn't choose Taiwan, primarily again about not being in a country that is adjacent to a possible enemy. There's a lot of Chinese missiles pointed at Taiwan, which I don't really like. But other than that, Taiwan's great. Taiwan is, a, you know, it's a vibrant country, very strong economy. It's one of the four Asian tigers. In economic terms, it's basically equivalent to places like Singapore, South Korea, Hong Kong. Can't recommend Taiwan enough, Taiwan's great. Just about anywhere in Asia is pretty damn good in terms of economic growth outside of Japan. Can't go wrong with Taiwan, Taiwan's wonderful. That brings us to the safest country in the world. The safest country in the world, yet another Middle Eastern country is Qatar. And their safety index is 11.9, another four points below number two on this list. Pretty crazy. Qatar is right across the bay from me. I haven't been there yet, but I'm gonna go there. I'll probably be spending a lot of time in Qatar. Qatar is very similar to Dubai slash UAE. Uh, it's a very ritzy, fancy, foofy place. It is one of the more liberalized, economically sound countries in the Middle East. And um, I don't know a lot about it. I will know more about it later in the year after I visit there a few times. I will certainly do a lot of YouTube videos on this when I spend some time there. I plan on spending a lot of time there. It's basically another one of these wealthy, small countries. And as I've talked about in prior videos, when you're dealing with smaller countries, they're better. They're well-managed, 
They're less of a clusterfuck like the larger countries. Their systems work much better. They tend to be a little more wealthier, or at least they can be, and they tend to be safer. I mean, win, win, win across the board when you move to a small country. That's why I purposely wanted to move to a small country in terms of population when I left the United States. Again, I wanna reiterate that three of the top 10 safest countries in the world are in the fucking Middle East. Think about that for a minute. I talk a lot about societal programming, about how you are wired by society to think certain things that aren't true. The Middle East is not a land of death. A lot of it is, but a lot of it is amazing, including where I live. Now, to wrap this video up, as I promised, I'm gonna give you the numbers on some Western countries. How do some Western countries that most of you watch this video live in rank in terms of the last 10 countries we discussed in terms of crime rates? Let's start with the United States. As you know, as we just reviewed, the top 10 safest countries have crime indexes between 22 and 11, right? Right? So guess what the United States number is? What would you guess the United States' number is on a scale from one to 100, compared to these top 10 safest countries? It's 47. What? It's many multiples more dangerous than any country on this list. The United States, where a lot of you live. And I know what you're gonna say, well, I don't live in the United States, I live in the UK. Yeah, you know what UK's number is? 44. Good fucking luck with that. Well, I'm in New Zealand, 42. Crime index of 42, again, more than double. Well, I'm in Australia, 41, high. The least bad Western country when I was eyeballing these charts, and you're welcome to click the link below and take a look yourself, was Germany at 35. 35 is still light years beyond number 10 on this list. Today's Western countries are not safe places to live. Now, if you compare them to horrible countries like many countries in Central America or Afghanistan or many countries in Africa, yes, they're much less bad than that. But when you compare them to the cool countries that I've covered in this video, they are not only worse, they are many multiples worse. You don't live in some kind of paradise by living in your collapsing Western country. As a matter of fact, you live in the United States, you're not free either, and you can click this video right here where I talk about how you are not free if you live in the United States. I hope this information has helped. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.